all right peace family welcome back to the channel in this one i want to go over the nazi gestapo and show how its origin was in the u.s so we always see the nazis being depicted as the root of evil or the greatest imagery of evil they would stop and frisk people mostly jews make them show their paper to prove that they wasn't jewish but what you don't hear about is in the U.S. in the 1700s and the 1800s because this was the 1900s with the Nazi Gestapo. So in the 1700s and 1800s, what we had was black people having to walk around with what we call freedom papers, in which I have some included. On these freedom papers, it would say how how tall they were, how much they should like weight, give an average description of these people, and it was signed and stamped and sealed. So if you ever seen a Django movie. At the end of the movie, the paperwork that he was getting, that would have been his freeman's paper. He would carry this around, look, I'm free. But we can go through these uh, anti-slavery all max and we can see that they was tearing up the freedom papers. In the soft United States, every colored person is presumed to be a slave to proven to be free. So now this is the same thing where every black person is criminalized. If you was black, you fit the description to be a slave. So when we had these indigenous blacks and aboriginal blacks, it didn't matter. You was presumed to be a ex-slave or a slave. That's why Andrew Jackson called all those people in Florida ex-slaves and runaway slaves. But black people were subjected to questioning, searches, and other forms of harassment. Often, oftentimes whippings and beatings for non-compliant. Even compliant slaves could be expected more than flogging and uh, beatings. However, slaves feared the threat of being placed on an auction block. So this is slaves and black people. They could round you up, be like, oh, let me see your papers. Oh, you don't got no papers. Just rip them up in front of you and now they can sell you and make profit off of you. And this went on everywhere. Frederick Douglass on Freedom Papers. He said in these papers, the name, age, color, height, and form of the free man were described together with any scars or the marks upon his person which could assist in his identification. This device of slaveholding ingen uh, ingenuity, like other devices of wickedness, in some measurements defeated itself, since more than one man could be found to answer the same general description. Hence, many slaves could escape by impersonating the owner of one of the set of papers, and this often done as follows. A slave nearly or sufficient answer in the description set forth in the papers would borrow or hire them till he could by their means escape to a free state or then by mail or otherwise return them to the owner the operation was hazardous one for the lender as well as the borrower a failure on the part of the fugitive to send back the papers would imperil his uh, benefactor and the discovery of the paper in the possession of the wrong man would imperil both the fugitive and his friend it was therefore an act of supreme trust on part of the freedmen of color to put in jeopardy his own liberties uh, for another might be free. It was, however, not infrequently bravely done and was seldom discovered. So I just wanted to show you the freedom papers. Frederick Douglass make a case for it to be a good thing, but that's just a backdrop on what the freedom papers was itself. But for black people, we had to show this no matter where we was at. So when you think of the Nazi Gestapo, no, think of the slave patrollers, your present day police, and how black people were stopped and frisked to show the paper and now in 2019 we still seeing the same type of behavior because it's all the same group peace family know yourself